So in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at how can we prove angles to be congruent. And in order to do this, we need some new theorems in order to build off of. Now, a theorem uh, using terminology from our deductive reasoning is a conjecture that we come to. And it, unlike a postulate, these conjectures need to be proven true. And we do that using other postulates or theorems. Now, the rules of using postulates or theorems to prove a theorem is that I can never use a theorem that came after the one that I'm trying to prove, or I can't use the theorem itself. So if I wanted to prove theorem 2.3 to be true, I could use any postulate that we picked up in unit one and any of them that came previous to it, but we cannot use itself, and we definitely can't use anything after it. So we are going to have five theorems in this lesson. Uh, here are our first three. So our first one, theorem 2.1, which is also called the vertical angle theorem, simply states that vertical angles are congruent. So it might be helpful to know exactly what, a, what vertical angles are. If you have two lines that intersect, which creates four angles, the angles that are directly across from each other, in case, this case, angle one and angle three, or angle two and angle four, are vertical angles. Now, directly across from each other um, is a good way of thinking about it. Um, and to prove this one, we will need a, our linear pair postulate and definition of supplementary. So, Perhaps you'll have an opportunity to do that at a later time. Our next theorem, theorem 2.2. This one's called the congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are supplements of the same angle or of congruent angles, then those two angles are congruent. Okay, so if I were to take a look at my previous one, uh, angles 1 and 2 form a linear pair. So 1 is the supplement of 2, but 2 and 3 also form a linear pair. So angle 3 and angle 2 are supplements. Well, since 1 and 3 are both supplements of 2, 1 and 3 would have to be congruent to each other. Simply what this one tells us. Theorem 2.3 is very similar to it. It is the congruent complements theorem. And it states if two angles are complements of the same angle or of congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. So these would build out an argument similar to what we did for theorem 2.2. Okay. What else do we have in this? Theorem 2.4 states simply that all right angles are congruent. Now, in order for angles to be congruent, by definition, they have to have the same measurement. So since a right angle is defined solely off of the fact that it has a measurement of 90 degrees, every right angle would have that. So all right angles would come out congruent. Now, there are more visual or graphic ways of uh, proving this one. And again, perhaps another time, run through that. Theorem 2.5 tells us if two angles are both congruent and supplementary, then each is a right angle. I have ha heard this one called the congruent supplements theorem, but never seen that in anything official. But if I have a pair of angles that are supplementary, so they do add up to be 180 degrees, and at the same time, those angles are congruent to each other. Sorry, not assuming the right angles, but they're congruent to each other. <clears throat> well, if they add up to be 180 and they're both the same thing, the only way to do this is if each one measures 90. Many of these theorems use each other to help provide the material necessary to do proofs. So they do become very interdependent upon one another. And they are items that will be used in proofs in future lessons as we continue our study of geometry.
But how can we quickly use some of these to do a few brief proofs? Well, first, let's just solve for the value of x. In the diagram, we do have two lines that intersect each other to form four angles. And by our definition of vertical angles, the two that are given here would so qualify. Now, according to our theorem 2-1, vertical angles theorem, all vertical angles are congruent to the respective vertical. In here, we can then expand that to include the idea that 3x is going to equal 2x plus 40. Now, using our subtraction property of equality, I can subtract 2x from each side, and I end up with just x equals 40. How do we know this to be true? Well, we can use substitution to run it back through. 3 times 40 is going to give me 120 degrees. And then 2 times 40 plus an extra 40 will equal 80 plus 40, which does come out to be 120 degrees. So each of these angles is 120. And then if we were to use our supplementary idea, we also have 60 degrees on left and right, in which case both sets of vertical angles do come out to be congruent. How else can we use these? In a more formal proof, <clears throat> we can be told from the diagram that angles 1 and 4 are congruent, but we need to prove that angles 2 and 3 are congruent. Building up on our idea of the two-column proof, we shall attack this one that way. So on the left, we have statements. And on the right, we give our reasons. Okay, so we're going to start out with what's our known information. That is angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. That's simply a given because it was stated in our information. Next, looking at our relationships here, angles 4 and 2 are vertical angles. So we can state that angle 4 is congruent to angle 2, and that is our vertical angle theorem, or theorem 2.1. Okay, If it has a number, I sometimes use the number. If it has a name, I do tend to default towards the name simply because names are more universal and the numbers will change from book set to book sets if you are in a formal study of geometry. Now, we can also make the statement here that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that is using our transitive property of congruence, which I like to shorthand as such. So transitive property of congruence. Then, we can make the statement that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and that is using, again, vertical angles, or theorem 2.1, or vertical angle theorem. Now, again, we can employ that same transitive property and say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So we're able to arrive using a given, the same theorem twice, and the same property of congruence twice at our destination. Now, some people like to ask, well, if 1 is 1 and 4 the same, 2 and 4 the same, you make 1 and 2, how can we don't call that simply substitution? And the reason for that is substitution is a property of equality, and here we are talking about congruent items so we have to use properties of congruence. If we had been talking about the measurements of the angles, then we could use equality properties and simply call it substitution. Okay. So five new theorems based off of relationships between angles.
and a little bit of practice with them and taking a look at formal proofs. We're going to get a lot more practice with proofs as our study of geometry goes on. So make sure you do get a lot of that and ask uh, your instructor if you aren't understanding why certain proofs do or do not work.